on the place, you know. But he thought, well, everybody would want to join the Yardbirds, you know, without even batting an eyelid, and he was right, because I joined. <laughs> I think he is the, well, the most unique guitar player and the most, uh, probably the most devoted. I mean, from what I know of Jeff, you know, he's either fixing his cars or playing the guitar, and there's no in between for him. Uh, and he actually has never changed. And he, he, I mean, unlike myself, who's been kind of wandering around a lot of the time, uh, dabbling in this and that and being led astray, Jeff has been very consistent, you know. I remember Keith Ralph saying, Let's, let me hear you play the blues at the audition. I went, oh, I played about three or four Matt Murphy lines. And he said, great, that, that'll do. <laughs> I didn't outline much uh, at that stage. It was like, get him in, let him, let him learn the songs. Eric used to do this, Eric used to do that. And I thought, yeah, got to do that for the time being, because that was, that was the, those were the crowd-pleasing things, the build-ups, the power chords. Uh, you know, so that was, it didn't make sense to try and argue against that. Um, but the, the best was, was round the corner, you know. I heard what a record, uh, Booker T and the MGs, Green Onions, and I just went straight out of my head when I heard that. That's what I want to play, that kind of stuff. Because it was like a stepping stone, like every day, you know, in those days, it was like, oh, that's out, you can't do that anymore, can't do Chuck Berry stuff. And I'd got lessons from that, you know, from Booker T's mob, and then the Stax thing started, Motown, all that real music, you know, real good pop music. That had some substance to it, and I dialed into that, and that's where I got picked up all the chord things that I subsequently used, and a lot of my stuff. In influenced by that, by the black Motown and Stax people. Just this kind of block sound they used to get, like Little Richard. It has never been achieved since. You couldn't get it if you tried. You don't get people with voices like Little Richard for a start, but it's not just that. It's the, the locked up sound they had in the band. They gave it that sound. Same with Jerry Lee and Vincent and all the rest of them.
The incredible thing about Jeff is that uh, his roots also were, were um, the, the blues and rock and roll, uh, but also he, he was much wider in his musical tastes. And he, he also had a mind and a talent that wanted to go much you know, further than just playing rock and roll or blues licks. And uh, it was perfect for us because we were about to enter a phase of all sorts of experimentation. I mean, in retrospect, we obviously put Jeff through an awful lot of pressure. You know, we used to work on material and then bring Jeff in and, and, and explain to him, like, for instance, the sitar sound uh, that he created for Heart Full of Soul. Uh, we'd originally, Giorgio had originally booked uh, an Indian a sitar player, I think from the local Indian restaurant, and a tabla player. And we tried to create this, this, uh, this sound at the front end of Heartful of Soul. But of course, it just sounded very thin and weedy, and there was no way. I mean, it, it sounded like a very bad cut. So we said to Jeff, can you, can you, you know, can you, what can you do? And Jeff came in and created, you know, this incredible sound. Threads of songs coming in from different writers, Jim and, and Paul used to write stuff and, and I just chimed in with my ideas of riffs and just stuff like that. And it's difficult with songwriting to know if you try and apportion it exactly, it is difficult. Um, and very often it's just a, a combined effort, although in this case Still I'm Sad was definitely just Jim and me. I mean we definitely turned up with it, but of course the, other, the rest of them playing it and, and contributed something to it. people bring down the biggest amps that had ever been built. I think it was four of them, big chrome stands, and it was like ridiculous. I mean, 
people were talking about a volume that was coming out of this little AC30, and they did kick it out. But these things look like a factory, you know, like some block of flats on stage. And, uh, but they didn't sound very good. <laughs> they must have thrown the sound, but, but on stage it, I felt more happy with the smaller amps. But it was the first feeling I ever got of, this is big stuff. We're now in the big league and you're going to get it in a big way. And I think we all felt that and we rose to the occasion. Everybody played amazingly well. <laughs> of people screaming and going berserk. And I'd, I wouldn't mind seeing that film. Uh, not to listen to the music so much, but just, you know, just get the vibe of it. I mean, the sound would probably be appalling, but we have been appalled up there. <laughs> Of course, going to the States was a huge thing for us because at the time, people didn't go to America. We just saw America on, on TV and uh, American films.